Having a better understanding of our job costing can answer questions and help us make decisions for our business, such as questions like, did we make a profit on this job? We can also analyze the estimated costs versus what the actual costs were and see those broken down by material, labor, overhead, and subcontracting. Also, we'll see how we can uncover inefficiencies or excess costs within a job. So let's start by taking a look at a job and see how the estimated costs get calculated. So we'll use this job here. And first of all, we'll start by taking a look at our operations. I can click on the search grid and get a list of all of my operations. I can see any actual production hours. More importantly, what are the estimated production hours? What are our production standards? So how long is this going to take? From there, we can also look at the materials grid. And in the materials, what part am I using? What are the estimated quantities and what are the estimated costs for these parts? We can further look at an operation line like this laser operation, where we can see that we have a quarter of an hour of setup time. And we have a production standard of seven minutes per piece. We also see our labor rates for setup and production, as well as our overhead rates are built into the operation. We have operations that go to outside vendors. We can set those items up. I'm going to send this out for anodizing. And we can see here that I've got a supplier associated with this. I also have some estimated costs in here. On the job material line, we're looking at the quantities per assembly, plus the estimated unit costs as we saw in the grid. Now that we've seen where our estimated costs are coming from, let's look at some tools that give us some real-time information of what is happening with the jobs. For example, we can look at a job analysis report. This is the report for one of the jobs that I had in the screen. And you can see here that this job analysis gives me a list of all the materials, all of the operation lines, even that subcontractor activity that we saw. And if I look at the second page of this report, it gives us a total estimate and the breakdown of what our material labor, subcontracting, and overhead costs are estimated to be. Now, I went ahead and ran this report for a second job as well. If you take a look at this job, we can see some information, same as we saw over there. What's our estimated cost for our materials and for our operations? We also see some other items, such as material transactions. So I can see right here in this job analysis that a purchase order was created for some materials they were received in. And if you look up here, we have our estimated cost for those materials, but we actually have the cost received and the cost actuals. If we look at the last page of this report, we can see the estimated material, labor, subcontracting, and overhead cost. And we also see our actuals because we've got some material transactions as well as some time cards put to this job. Our time cards can be seen on the job analysis as well. So you see I have two time card lines. One of those lines is for 200 hours. So we can quickly see where this labor and overhead cost is being driven from. This is what it looks like from a report view. And anytime I run this report, it gives me a snapshot of what is happening within that job at the time that I run the report. Above looking at a report view, I can also click on a job. So this is the other job that we had the job analysis for. I can click on this job and right click it and use our where used functionality to see other information such as any time card lines that were put against it, those receipt lines for items received. I can open this and this is the grid with the receipt information, our quantities, our estimated costs, things like that. We can also use our related data grids to show us that information, such as those time card lines. Another tool that we have that's beneficial is a costed bill of materials report. This is a report that we can look at without even creating a job and see what the current material costs are, how much it would take to produce this item. And this is the information that gets pulled in if we were to create a quote for this part. Above being able to see our estimated costs and our estimated versus our actuals and real-time reporting, we can also have alerts on our dashboard that start telling us when things are going over estimates, such as this job operations over estimates grid that I have as a KPI. 
I can double click that and quickly see a list of jobs that have operations that have gone over estimates. So I can see here, I've got this top operation should have been 15 hours, it was 20 hours. If I can start diving into that information and making those business decisions in the moments that they're happening.